Hello, Gothamites. It is Season 3, Episode 17, and there is one primal riddle, and it is, who runs Gotham? It's here and it's next. You're tuning in to the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Hey, We're here. Pop goes pump. You have to kick drum. Have to have a double kick drum. Thank you all so much for joining us here at After Buzz TV's coverage of Gotham Season 3, Episode 17. I'm your host, Steve Kaufman. You find me on Twitter at Steve Kaufman. That is K-A-U-F-M-A-N-N. But I'm not alone. We are not quite full strength. <laughs> not quite yet. Lucretia will be joining us next week. We're so excited to have her back. In the meantime, I'm Joel Monique. You can find me all over the internet at Joel Monique every week at BlackGirlNerds.com. And really listening to this music. The, is, this, is this a common playlist? Playlist choice for BlackGirlNerds.com? Uh, it is not. It is not. Uh, but BlackGirlNerds.com is doing the music. The the. Oh my gosh. You'll get there. Spotify challenge for the month, where we have a new playlist every month. So if you guys are into playlists, uh, Lewis Tan, who just interviewed over at After Buzz, is gonna create a workout playlist for us. So okay. Good time. Lin-Manuel well, Miranda's doing a playlist. I playlist. Will, I'll send you a jazz playlist. Do it. Unsolicited. So much fun. Cause that's. That's for another day where I was like, just some white dude sending black girl nerds a jazz playlist. You know what? If the music is good, we don't judge. We're down with the jam. Speaking of being down with the jam, we got a lot to talk about <laughs> here on Gotham. Yes. So we ended out last week with Penguin and Ivy kind of coming up with an idea yeah. to put get some freaks together. And we kind of talked about who we think the freaks are. Yeah, uh, we did guess Mr. Freeze would be back. Yeah. Makes sense, we're in the snow, we're in the tundra. I was glad to see him and his bluish purple nipples back. Uh, it was very exciting. Uh, I did not expect to see Bridget, aka Firefly, back. I was excited. I like this character a lot. We haven't seen or heard from her since uh, the release of All the Prisoners. She was. She would have been my dark horse pick to be to be one of the, one of the freaks they dig up. I didn't know it would be yeah. so soon, but I do like the instant fire and ice they create oh, between both yes. of them. Then you have Penguin. Um, you have Ivy. Let's be real, there's going to be more than these four. Oh, God. Well, you, First of all, one would hope. Indian Hill. Yeah. like We had a lot of really cool freaks in there. I feel like we should get more of them. Uh, you guys all know my favorite, Hatter. But I cannot remember his actual name from the show. All I know is his Mad Hatter from the thing. That's fine. Okay. He's just Mad Hatter. Yeah. We can just go with Mad Hatter. Chat, fill me in. I know he has a real name. Um, I'm hoping we see him because he's my favorite performance on the show to date. It's stunning. I mean, Cobblepot's had a lot more episodes. Yeah. I think. If but you... the succinctness of his performance, the the quickness in which we got into his character, um, and he's got just such a dark, broody. Like Jerome's backstory is. Is great, but uh, I really like Hatters of just, I was just a little nutty before, since birth. <laughs> Not very many <laughs> tragic things happen to me. I just like to torture people. That's my kind of villain. Um, Danny Ryan in the chat is asking, did mm. they cast someone different as Firefly? I don't believe so. I, if so, I, I didn't catch it, but... No, it's still Michelle Ventimiglia. Yeah. Okay. I, was, yeah, I, I had to person. check it, because the IMDb for Gotham is not great. Like, episode to episode. Oh, no? Because they give so many people a season credit, so you don't know when they'll appear. That like, Well, okay, You click the Gotham. episode, and it's just like, it says Butch. And like, oh, Butch was in this episode. And then it says Lucius. And I'm like, Lucius was not in this episode. There's no Lucius here, sir. But okay. But get up on Lucius it, IMDb was editors. Lucius was happening in the background. <laughs> working with... Uh, I think we may Jim. have actually we may have actually heard him in the background. I think that might be <laughs> that might be why he gets that credit. Um, but I really enjoy this, and they gave us just the taste this week because there's enough else happening mm. that it, they just let us know that it's going down, and that Penguin is out, or that um, Nigma is out for Penguin, as you would assume Nigma would be, as a supervillain. Yeah, or a villain. You can't really call any of them supervillains if Bat not yet. If Batman's still a youngin, they're on their way to super super villainry. Super in villainy. the mean in the meantime, they are uh, they're just villains with a little extra. They're like extra villains. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I kind of like where we're going with like Penguin and Ivy though. That team up is really interesting to me. Mm -hmm. The bratty teen with like the old kind of crotchety dude. Uh, it's, it's good. especially she's just like ranting on and on about like oh it's gonna be really great we're gonna be doing all this and just like I just trying to bring the people together have this plan shush shush I just love that she's emotionally 13 yes it's just perfect I'm not complaining about anybody though <laughs> <laughs> so great so 
before we get into the meat and potatoes yeah. of mm. the episode, let's talk about clone Bruce. Mm. And we can just call him Bruce for the context of this podcast because there is no actual No Bruce. other Bruce here. No other Bruce in this episode. Yes. In this universe, he's still around and it looks like we're going to get a lot of him next week. So excited. But clone Bruce lets Alfred win in chess. Does he let him win or is he not as good as Bruce? I was confused about it. Genuinely asking. Like, at first, my, my first instinct was, like, oh, he just lost. And he's like, oh, you must have let me win, Master Bruce. And he's like, what? No. What are oh, you talking okay. about? Then and he he's just bad at lying and catching up. But I also like the idea of him being, like, this soft, gooey-hearted kid on the inside. Wait, but, who... they, but they trained Clone Bruce so well on, like, all the intricacies That's about true. his parents' true. death that they didn't train him. In chess? How to, you could train a computer to beat anyone in chess. But he's a human being. We gotta teach him emotions, and those are hard. You can't teach a computer emotions. But he's a clone. You could teach him. You could all. He's a clone, a programmable clone. You could cheat. You could teach him chess in like a, a morning, like before lunch. Okay, yeah, but could you teach him to be good at chess? Cause like Alfred's good at chess. Like Alfred's smart. If he was programmable like a computer or like a brainwashed clone, mm, I see what you're saying. You would be able to program him more like a computer, meaning in a very short period of time, you should be able to program program okay. him to destroy Alfred in chess. All right. Well, I, I like the programming way too much theory thought into of, this. No, there's never too much thought. It's Gotham, <laughs> and I feel like if you know, if he, I like the idea of like, oh, soft, gooey kid, like just here to help and be kind and nice. I like that idea of because then that's a prevailing trait within Bruce. Like it's it's yeah. the thing that gets kind of passed on and in that's his genes. What moves forward because he gets a nose bru- he gets a nosebleed. Mm. Alfred's on to him. He goes to the court. And the court pretty much is like, yeah, you're you're a clone. You're gonna die. It's not gonna be good. You're this is not you're not a long term solution, clone Bruce. I like how straightforward she was with him though. Is he gonna die? Yeah. You're, the stuff we had to make you was kind of faulty. Yeah. Nothing. Don't worry. Real Bruce will be back Popsicle to do whatever it is he's supposed to do. Something very ominous because he's like, a lot of people are going to die, aren't they? And I'm like, oh, no. It's like the Sixth Sense kid. He's feeling it. Is he Bad the, things are is coming. Is he the second weapon? The first weapon is... The first weapon will kill like 30% of Gotham and, <laughs> and just leave it in Bedlam that yeah. Bruce can be the second weapon. And I think it's interesting if that... he wasn't Bruce, yeah. Yeah, I mean... There, we see from the previews, he's they've been calling him the protector of Gotham. I think we maybe got a little bit of that last week or the week before. Yeah. Uh, so it was interesting that he is now a we- like that. It, it's perceived from our point of view that maybe they're training him to actually be a weapon. Uh, or if- he's, or it's the court's way of truly puppet mastering and pulling pulling strings, which makes complete sense mm. that they create both the villain and the hero. It does make complete sense that they run when you the, know what one hand is doing and the other. They're going to run. Everything. They're going to run the city the whole. They're going to run the city the whole way, including, for better or worse, they're going to include. Well, we're going to unleash this giant villain, and then we're going to create the hero that takes down the villain. Mm-hmm. And while everyone's paying attention to this fight versus good and evil, we're going to continue to run stuff. And they're that gonna, makes sense. And they're all going to feel good, like we're going to sell them hope. That makes sense. And when you control that government, like, industry, commerce, the good and the bad. That sounds like court. Yeah. It sounds like the Court of Owls. I love it. We're going to be talking a lot about the Court of Owls here. I'm really excited. But there's one last... There, well, there's two things. First off, this clone Bruce has an emo gooey center. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. However, he's still a clone trained to, like, hurt people. So... So he's in that interesting territory of clones where, like, if you guys are fans of Star Wars Clone Wars, you might have seen, like, the clones... Though they are genetic copies, are not digital copies. Yeah. They're not the exact same people that came before them. Their experiences and interactions with the world make them different human beings. So I, I kind of wonder how, as we were mentioning earlier, how programmable, how how computer is he, how mm. you know, organic is he, and where does he fall along those lines? It's still not clear to me what he wants. Like, yes, he's grown attached to Selena, but then you know, he kind of not that attached apparently. Well, no, he is attached. It's he's also. I think he's bred to be that alpha. Mm. He's bred to be that alpha that it's. I care about you. You leave. Mm. Oh man, she's not doing what I'm saying. She's not doing what I'm saying. Use force. Use force. Use force. Throw her out a window. Oh man. Did I he d- seem sad? I did that though? wrong. But if you have to teach him emotions. Oh, you know, what? going back to Star Wars, it is a little like Anakin when he sh- starts uh, choking out Padme. And episode three, he's like, you're not listening. And she's like, I'm just trying. Mm. Uh, Benjamin Slade in the chat. 
talking a lot about how there's too much Bruce in it. And I think that the part that cares about Selena at all is the mm. Bruce part. Yes. But the part that threw Selena out a window because she like defied him is the programmable clone file weirdness part. Yeah. I think that's the best way to describe it. I think so, too. But Selena, as of this moment, is unconscious after being thrown out a window, being hovered by some cats. Are we about to, are we about to get some origin? And how do you feel if this... Joel, how would you feel if this were the origin of Catwoman on I'm pretty peeved, Gotham y'all. season three? I'm pretty peeved, because as we, as we talk about every week, Gotham borrows from every Batman iteration before it, which is kind of dope. It's what makes yeah. it a cool show. Uh, every Batman fan has their own individual headcanon of how old is Bruce, when did he start, who mm. were his best trainers. It goes on and on and on. And so I, as I've watched the show and gotten used to it and learned more about it, I, the more I'm willing to accept a lot of the different origins. And, and it's cool to see how things I maybe didn't like or aren't accepted in my headcanon can be valuable and useful in the universe of Batman. But man, I got a question using that Catwoman intro from the movie, like the the Egyptian cats licking a dead Catwoman back to life, and and that's why she's Catwoman. Never made sense to me. Catwoman is a cat burglar, y'all. That's it. Like that's how she got her name. That's what made her cool. Even when she was back in purple dress, Catwoman looking fly and somehow still leaping from rooftops, like she was. She's a dope stealer of things. So you're, so I would imagine your favorite Batman is the Nolan universe. Because it, seem, it seems you rely less and less on mysticism. You know, no, actually, I, I love mysticism in Batman. I just want... You don't want it in Gotham. I, <laughs> I don't want this... To me, Catwoman... What, I, I don't like when Catwoman's a prostitute. I don't. Like, she's... A, many women prostitute... The, people prostitute themselves when they don't have money and can't make ends meet. Mm-hmm. But she's a master thief. Like, why? Like, there's lots of comic iterations that do that, where she's a prostitute, and, like, no. I want Catwoman to be a cat burglar, and everything after that is, like, whatever. I I just don't buy the fact that, like, cats heal people. I I don't like... Like, I like the Lazarus Pit. That kind of mysticism, good for me. Okay. Cats bringing people back to bed? I don't buy it. But what if the cats are from the Lazarus Lazarus Pit? Uh, Then we should have started with cats coming out of the Lazarus Pit, so I could have been like, oh, my God, these cats are imbued with Lazarus Pit juice. And when they lick humans, they come back to life. Then I would buy it. That's a better story. <laughs> um. <laughs> there you okay. That last comment. <laughs> I yeah no I I just to take well, it's more much more interesting to me the fact that they took like what is arguably the worst Batman property and we're like you know what I bet we could still find a gem in there and because it's the Gotham writers I'm hoping that maybe it does work maybe but seeing it so close to the tail end without any payoff yet. I'm real sketch about it. We'll get into it on predictions. Okay. I'm holding on hope that that was not a straightforward origin. One would hope. And that she's going to wake up with powers as much as, like... And this show doesn't deal in such magic like Arrow would. We haven't been getting into that now. The, the cats could have come from a swamp that waste was dumped in, mm-hmm. and then the waste coupled with something Selena <laughs> ate cured... Her, her concussion because she fell from that window and everything was fine. Mm-hmm. It's Gotham, guys. It's really Gotham. the only thing you chalk it up to. Well, and whatever they do next week, we'll accept it once it happens. You know what? We will. That's the thing. I don't argue with it. I just tell you whether I like it or don't. And then the next week, I'm like, well, that's what's happening. Moving on. To yes. What's happening? Nigma. Yay. In Hamlet. Yes. I read the I read the reviews in the Gotham Gazette. He was all right. He was okay, you know. He, he, held he, uh, he uh, killed, if you ah. will. Just a nice. I like it. But yeah, I'm enjoying this version of a of a decent villain, Nigma, who is now going by the Riddler. Officially. Yeah, I like. I what I like was interesting about this was that Riddler is not. Uh, it's not an alternate identity for him. It is who he has become. He does not want to be Edward in his regular life. He wants to be the Riddler 24-7, which isn't how I ever kind of pictured the Riddler. Uh, even Jim Carrey's Riddler, who kind of was always on 24-7, I, I still kind of picture them being able to go back to Edward. So I like this idea of, like, this is the Riddler 24-7. He's transformed into a new person. He's officially gone kind of mm-hmm. loony bins crazy. It's fun. I like the bowler hat. It's kind of a sleek homage to the original without being, like, super hard on the nose, all green. Um, and I think they've been doing that with his costuming throughout pretty well. 
uh, and I like this. It's kind of a not a debut because he's already kind of mm. been going on as Riddler, but it's like a nice follow up. Uh, I do wish his riddles were a little more tricky. That's my only kind of gripe with this so far is whenever he says a riddle, it's either like yes or that's a subjective answer, <laughs> and I'm not a big fan of subjective subjective answer riddles. I agree because uh, they're just not great riddles. No, <laughs> like, no. If the answer can be more than one thing, and that's not your intended goal, it's just, oh, okay. It's a little too much psychological reading of the person, especially, like, even last week when we have uh, Fox going after him, and he's like, loneliness, he's like, no, it's love, and I'm like, I, I get what's happening here, writers, but he's the Riddler, and I feel like his jokes maybe season two, three, or his riddles, rather, were a little more complicated than what we're getting now, and maybe it's because they have to write so many so fast. Well, and I think, I will say... His rid his riddles in the se in season one specifically were very like so complicated that I, I would have to pause and be like wait a minute. But that's how it should be. Hold like on. I would prefer that I have to contemplate for a long Conversationally, time. Conversationally though. Well, so were you saying you didn't understand what he was saying, or that the riddles were just hard to solve? Because those are two different things. Okay. Both. Like conversationally, he'll try to use a riddle, and to be fair, to be fair, they made a game of it in season one mm -hmm. where it was. He would use the riddle conversationally, and Pete Gordon would just be like, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about, bro. You Seriously, like, can we, we just move? <laughs> like, you tried to tell me ice. Can you just say ice? <laughs> and that's what made it perfect. It, it, don't like, tell me I fly by ship, and I go by night. I do some things. I is, just is want it, the answer. Is it ice? Oh, wow. <laughs> I love Gordon for those seasons, though. It's just uh, it's so kitschy and, like, cute. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I like the idea. I like him dragging out the sword. Uh, I like him kind of going after the elite and then being like, pearls trapped. <laughs> it's, it's very classic Gotham of just fancy people in pearls. Like, oh God, what will we do? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I have to go all the way back to the outskirts of town yes. where none of this violence will get me. Foolishness. You can't escape it. Well, what's funny is, what's funny about Gotham is it's still all Gotham. Yes. Whereas any other city, you would live in another city surrounding that city. It's true. And just travel into Gotham, travel into Gotham to see Hamlet, and then like run, but, like we gone. We gotta go. <laughs> yeah, it's like when uh, Chicago is really bad and people still want to see theater there. They were like, "Oh no, it's scary. Just duck in and out." <laughs> this is what you gotta do. You gotta yep. go in and out. So there's no segue between in and out and Enigma. So Enigma <laughs> and Barbara. So I'll just jump into it. Enigma is now partnered with Barbara, who yes. is also partnered with Tabitha and Butch. Ooh, what a messy relationship. Barbara spills the beans partially because she needs to figure out where um, she needs to figure out what's happening at Doc 9C that Gordon knows about. because She didn't have all the information and she also wants to know who's killing her men. Mm. Answer she still has not received. No, I understand why Barbara is frustrated. Like this. First of all, um, I've been liking the rise of Barbara ever since the elevator episode last season where she goes down with Jim and they have that long conversation and you're like Barbara's back she's so cool again uh and she's smart and she's witty which is fun and she's like getting closer to her goal I like that it's Barbara really gunning after the court because I don't think they see her coming you know what I mean like I don't think Barbara they don't see her coming they've, they've seen Nygma coming for a while mm -hmm. they're gonna see Cobblepot coming for a while she's the wild card yeah like she just owns some like sleazy bar on the side like some people kind of know her She's kind of under this impression that she's running Gotham, but you don't get that sense at all, really, truly yet, uh, that everyone bows down to her. So there's this, like, exciting kind of momentum behind her. Uh, I'm sad, though, because now her and Tabitha are on weird places, and I really enjoy their friendship, but I don't see Butch letting that last for much longer. No. Well, well I have a prediction about Butch. Okay, we'll get there then. But... Barbara never got the answers. Mm -mm. Nigma eventually got his answers. What Nigma, mm -hmm. what Nigma had to do, I'm trying to think if I forgot anything about Nigma, Barbara, Tabitha, Butch. I think we're good. You know, we're good there to kind of move. I made it separate because it is separate that they've aligned themselves. Yeah. So that it seems clear that they're going to align themselves, and then they're going to align themselves with team with team freaks, mm. with Penguin, Ivy, Freeze, Bridget. Wait, are you saying Tabitha and Butch are going to line up with the freaks? Or well, no, I think the unlike the uneasy alliance that is Barbara Tabitha Butch will have to align with the freaks because the Court of Owls is gonna 
have a bomb. If or they make it that far, Barnes. Or I honestly think Tabitha Butcher are gonna separate off completely. I don't see them hanging out with Barbara for even maybe more than two more episodes. I have a prediction about Butch. Okay. We'll wait. <laughs> and I have a feeling that Barbara, because she's messy, isn't going to side with the freaks. I think the freaks are gonna be off doing their own thing. Maybe Tabitha and Butch join up with them, even though he hates Penguin. I could totally see somehow them deciding to team up together. I don't know. Barbara's such a wild card. I don't know what happens with her yet. Fair enough. We'll come back to it. <laughs> Let's go into the main plot of the story where Nigma yes. Nigma at the um at the Hamlet at the Hamlet. Yes, the hamburger Hamlet. No, at the mm-hmm. performance of Hamlet, kills both the actors, leaves a green box, the green box has a riddle, the riddle the riddle mentions the mayor, who is the interim mayor. Um, I created a meme. Like I guess it was the beginning of season two where Tabitha would um put the mayor put the mayor's um head in the box head in the box yeah. and then she would whip him yeah she would and I was like I whip the mayor back and forth I whip oh, the mayor no, back and not. forth I whip the whip I love your dad jokes I whip the mayor back and forth I whip the mayor back and forth it's back guys it is back <laughs> you didn't have to go in the box but it was threatened it the box was threatened um I love this actor oh my goodness Richard Kind is his name oh he's great. Good old Chicago boy. Uh, he's by the way of New Jersey. He's from New Jersey. I was about to say, he's from like. But my he went to the Northwestern right. and studied in Chicago and went to Second City and all other stuff. Boy. Yes, uh, Northwestern is pretty much in Chicago, and then he did Second City, which is just Chicago. Yes. So, uh, but he when he says that line, uh, you know how many corrupt politicians there are here? It was just the most Chicago moment to me, and it was <laughs> prime. Uh, I it lo- reminds me of like when people uh, ask Rahm Emanuel on, honestly about how he felt about being ousted as mayor and he's like that's like Rahm Emanuel's still the mayor of Chicago or then who am I are you talking about uh, the governor mm-hmm. uh, yes oh god Rob something yeah that guy he he was a corrupt self yes. but he was funny too and Chicagoans like that mm. uh, but our mayor is cowardly mm. you know, not so much what he is he just is like please don't put me in the box please don't blow up my head I mean we'd all be saying these things but at the same time I wish he had some kind of spine just a little like any kind of integrity nope. to him at all. If he did, he wouldn't be mayor. I guess. Just eating these f- box of free danishes. It's from a thankful citizen. You think, sir? You <laughs> think? Oh, boy. Um, I liked Edward's forethought in even taking his pills and writing little question marks on them. Attention to detail. That's what makes you classy, Edward. I dig it. Um, this was pretty straightforward plot, actually, of mm-hmm. just capture the guy. Capture the guy. Uh, Nigma's a planner, so he plans an explosion that'll bring a bunch of bikers and sordid folks into the place that they won't notice that he's dressed as a cop. He comes and gets the mayor. He takes the mayor somewhere and then hacks the TV feed. Get your TV feeds together, Gotham. Oh, my God. Is it? it does the FCC not exist? I have a lot we of don't questions. have time. Um, but I think that's... And the mayor on TV on TV says, we're both dead men. The court would never... Like, if you actually expose things, the court calls Gordon, who Gordon at this point has been a sleeper for them. He's been talking to them about trying to join. We're, we're unsure whether he's actually going to join or not going to join. And they say, you need to contain this. Mm-hmm. Question. Mm. Do you think Gordon contained this because he's a cop? And he doesn't want the court to destroy the city preemptively. Mm -hmm. Or that he actually wants to join the court and figure everything out. Neither. I think he's an undercover agent right now. He's, he's, he needs to get closer to the court to understand what happened in order to dismantle them. He can't do it at this early juncture. He doesn't have enough information. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know who else sits on the board. He, he could do no real damage. And if he loses their trust now, he may never get another chance. So I think he's just playing the long game, which is like, let's get in, let's get close and, and to, to great sacrifice to his personal beliefs, too, because the Gordon we knew in season one wouldn't even think about giving over Penguin. Like, that's just not a thing that would happen. You kind of saw how, I'm sorry, the Riddler, uh, and you saw how pained he was in making that decision. Uh, I like it, though. I like that we're getting into, because this is what makes Gordon for me. He's a cop who, before he becomes commissioner, is believes firmly in in, in everything a cop should stand for, in mm-hmm. community, in service to community, in, in right versus wrong, in the law. And along the way, that is just constantly tested <laughs> to the point where he starts to learn how to play with both sides in order to get the best result. And that's kind of the moment that I've been waiting for. Like, we've seen him go back and forth. We've seen very self-righteous Gordon. I love Gordon who's like, 
We just got to bend the rules, guys. You're going to have to do it. I personally like Drunk Bounty Hunter Gordon, but that's just... That's... Me. You know what? That is my favorite Gordon. That is a fascinating Gordon, but that Gordon shouldn't be allowed to last too long. No. Like, if, if I have more than two years of Drunk Bounty Hunter Gordon, that's... Well, no, I, actual episodes, there should only be a couple episodes yeah. of Drunk Bounty Hunter Gordon. But it was like, great. He clearly had a whole summer as Drunk Bounty Hunter. <laughs> yeah. With his uh, situated love affair. God, I miss her. Bring her back. <laughs> she was great. She was not Vicky Vale. Valerie something, Valerie, I think is her name. Valerie, Yes. Amazing. Pretty sure she was Valerie Vale. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, she was. Wonderful. And they and they did a lot of uh, Gotham Gazette content mm -hmm. on the website with her writing. Oh, did they? With her writing, it was very well done. I gotta check it out. I haven't seen that. <laughs> um, so Gordon joins the Court of Owls. Before he does, he talks to Lee, who does the Budgeman call it, who does the autopsy on Uncle Frank. Mm. He keeps trying to tell Lee to back down. Lee makes this huge reveal. That she is so in the dark still about Gordon that she was like, I can't sit by and watch you ruin another life. You ruin lives. Look, she doesn't know. I don't like this version of Lee. And it's not Lee's fault. These are real things that a real person would feel if they felt their just brand new fresh husband was murdered by a jealous ex-lover. This is an impossible situation that IRL no one could fathom. But me and TV land, it's just like Lee... Like, oh, cut this man's a break. Like, he's done everything. Everything for you. And it's just, it's so frustrating to watch her just have so much hate and resentment. When what I'd really like her to do is move on from being out there at all. Like, it's just torture for you to be here all the time. And then poor James, like, I'm just afraid we're going to get a femme fatale, femme fatale moment with Lee where she winds up shooting Gordon really soon. Like, probably right toward the end of the season. That sounds right. Yeah. She's definitely headed that way. She's smart. She's witty. She's questioning things. She finds a bullet. She's like, it's an old mob tactic. Why aren't you asking better questions? And I'm like, Shh, you're going to get yourself killed, girl. Uh, but yeah, my guess you would is... Think, you would think they were together long enough that he had some kind of shorthand. Right. Like, that they would have had some kind of shorthand. I, granted, like it would need to be like a word or something. Like mm. She doesn't trust him at all. But there should be some kind of shorthand of like when couples get into a fight mm. and the fight's about to be stupid, one of them says banana. Mm -hmm. And they just back off. Yeah, they're that, like, this is not that, worth fighting anymore. Is that just me? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my banana's not my safe word, but, you know, I feel you. Where you're just like, look, we, well, we're drawing a an line. an argument safe word. <laughs> you have to have separate safe word. You, yes. you have to have an argument safe word. And then, and then a sex safe word because it's just it's dangerous otherwise. Yeah, uh, they should have something. They should have some kind of communication. I wish she was seeing him at all, but I understand why she isn't. If we continue down the storyline, I hope that we get more of Lee's daily life perspective because without it, she really just seems like a bitch. Like, it's justified, mm. but when, without seeing anything, like any of her other struggles, she just comes out of nowhere like, I'm angry, bye. And you're like, damn, Lee, wow, that's just so much anger and hate in the <laughs> Danny morning. Rain, Danny Rain in the chat, but like, is it her business? <laughs> I could buy that, though. <laughs> Like, is it your business, though? Oh, God, yes, please. I wouldn't mind seeing her trying to tra crack this case on her own, like, next week. Just going after it, like, trying to find the real ballistic bullet and all this other stuff. That'd be fun. <laughs> um, also, a couple shout-outs for the chat. Renji90998, those Danishes looked deadly good. Ah! I see what you did there. Dad jokes, Renji. Oh, so many dad jokes. They're perfection. So they'd be in the chat... That dog is so 100 in the chat. David Linear in the chat. I'm sure it's two ends, so it's probably not just Linear. It's Benjamin Lin Slade, what up? Yo. David Linear. Yes. Uh, Linear? Linear? We got it. There's two ends. It's probably <laughs> Linear or Linear. I like it. It would still be Linear. I Tell us what you're, <laughs> tell us how to pronounce your name, David. <laughs> that dog is so 100 says Lee needs to cut the madness down. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just so much anger and hostility. Because uh, she doesn't. She's been given the truth about what happened to her husband. Mm. She does not believe it. No, she doesn't. And again, how, I don't how do you her. deal with that? I guess you don't. I just like, want to see her dealing with it, I guess, is really my biggest gripe. It's just, I just want to see what Lee is dealing with on a daily basis so that when she comes in hot-headed, I have some like background for that. Uh, I agree with that, too, that like maybe we get some context of, like, oh, she... She's seeing a therapist, or she hits the heavy bag at the gym. Or, or Lee is struggling at home, and she's all by herself, and she has no family to turn to. And she's sad, and that makes her angry every day when she goes into work. Or she's paying prostitutes to shoot her while she wears a bulletproof vest. Wrong show. Sorry. Whoa, whoa. Just hopping over into leftovers territory. Wrong show. Sorry. So fast. <laughs> uh, but Bullets this episode, I like how ride or die Bullock is. Like, Bullock's our guy who's always willing to break the rules, and he's just like, you know what, Jim? Yeah, we're doing it. 
Lee, don't worry about don't worry about it, Lee. We got this. We got this. Okay, so we're gonna go get the court. <sighs> Lee, we Lee, we hired another coroner. I just feel like as head of the police, why don't you have a team on this? <laughs> like I know it's like who can we trust, but you oh, you know what? Actually, I wish they you had know, started to try. No, no, you know why though, right? All of their last people got killed. And and Bullock and Bullock's not the head of the police; he's the head of the homicide department. So he only oh, okay, okay, you're and right, you're right. You're he, right. he reports to the commissioner, who we have to assume is under the spell of the who mm. who is all but a guarantee he's under the spell yeah. of the court. Gotham civics, lesson. like directly or indirectly. I feel you. That's a minor civics lesson. It was helpful That's, though. It was helpful. It's just top down managerial. <laughs> Top down managerial strategy. It's necessary in the head of homicide, the director of homicide reports to the commissioner who reports to the mayor. So yeah, okay, so you can't trust anybody. All right. But Tabitha whips her whips the mayor back and forth. She whips the mayor back and forth. Thank you. I think on that I think it's time. (laughs) So (laughs) (laughs) Ah. just get you good and flustered. Oh goodness gracious. And ask you what's about to happen. Uh, Bridget is going to continue to throw molten flyer in people's faces because that was my favorite part of this episode. Bridget is a badass. I love her and Ivy's interactions. Um, and I love that she hates Freeze. Uh, Price. I am looking forward to them fighting, um, for the first time as a unit. But as for next episode, it looks like Bruce is getting some Rajal Ghoul-ish training. Now, that wasn't Raish we saw. It's still the guy from last week who's but not Raish al Ghul. feels pretty Raish al ghoul Now, perhaps, and kind of linking last episode to this episode to next episode, I think that the court has one idea for Bruce. It's this guy. I think Raish might have a different idea for Bruce or for the court. Come in, steal Bruce, and we get a little training with Raish, and the court's plan starts to fall apart. I think we'll see that maybe Correct. next week. I think... To piggyback your prediction, mm-hmm. I think the court's plan is for Bruce to be a straw man hero. Mm. To be a paper hero, a straw man hero, to defeat the villain, to com- to do a complete misdirect. Mm. That everyone in Gotham will think, oh no, the, the, the villain has been, va- the evil has been vanquished. Mm. And either the court's weapon, either the court's weapon is still just going to level the city. Although if they're leveling the city, why do they need a faux war? I don't know what's happening anymore. I don't know what they're doing with Bruce. If they're trying, why would the Court of Owls make Batman? What's more confusing is how quickly they want to return him back to Gotham, because it doesn't seem like Bruce Number Two or Goth Bruce or Emo Bruce, however you want to refer to him. So many Bruces. So many Bruces. Uh, he. It seems like he's not long for this world. Like he's like I'm dying. Yeah. Which to me says max like a month, M- maybe two. No, he's been. He's been off that bus for, like, a year. Right, but how much time does he have left, I'm saying, from, like, that conversation to how many, how long do you think until he dies? That I don't know, but I'm, I would imagine, I would imagine he only has a shelf life of a couple, of, like, a year or two. Interesting. Okay. That he was probably a clone, he was probably a clone of Bruce fairly recently. Mm. And then he escaped from Indian Hill, the season finale of season two. Mm-hmm. So in Gotham time, that's been less than 12 months. Mm. That maybe he's an 18-month clone. Okay. All right. Okay. I, I worked that out. He's an 18-month clone. I'm standing by he's it. He's a year and a half, for those of you who don't have friends with babies. Uh, and it... Okay. So a year and a half. So maybe he's got six months left. Okay, you could inundate someone in six months. to You could brainwash them into your, doing yeah. your bidding. Potentially. All right. Because I felt like maybe he had only like a couple of weeks left. And while you could do some pretty good brainwashing... It, in a couple of weeks, you can also do some pretty good unwashing in just the same amount of time. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It takes a minute to really root an idea in a person's fundamental personality, especially someone like Bruce, who's so strong and grounded in his beliefs already. Like, he's not going to be told a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how long they decide to keep Bruce number two alive, and then hopefully we get a reveal of the original plan, because... I really need a reveal of this plan. Hopefully sooner rather than later. If you're, if you're the Court of Owls, create Batman is a really bad plan. I mean, they can't know that because they don't know the power of Batman. Like, But create a superhero that will try to right the city if you're the city's wrong, the Court of Owls. But you don't see yourself as wrong. And if you create your Batman, they won't see you as wrong either. They're going for, you know, the the Bob Batman, whereas we're pulling for a finger Batman <laughs> where we get more of a, a Bill Finger, like, you know, Dark Knight. But they're hoping for, like, a more Bob marketable kind of okay. Batman. I see you. I got into some deep cuts there. If you guys don't know the history of who created Batman, there's an amazing documentary on Hulu. Uh, 
I knew about Bill Finger. I knew some stuff. That documentary changed everything. It was incredible. Uh, so we had a really good we had a really good comment on Twitter last week Ooh. about who will who is the villain? Who is the weapon? If the weapon's a person. Yes, yes, yes. And everyone's and it, they said Barnes. We didn't think of Barnes. Barnes would have made sense. I saw that, and I literally screamed in the middle of my office, so thank you for whoever made that comment, <laughs> because I was like, my God, it could be Barnes. We haven't seen him in a while. He's got all of this rage. People know him as a police detective or captain. Was he Captain Barnes? He was Captain. Well, he was, he's whatever Bullock is now. So okay, he's a yeah. captain who reports to the commissioner. Copy. So, big wig. It would be great to see him just unleashed, a la like Jerome, where it's like all cameras and stuff. He's going through the city, and then... Book is the one who has to try to stop him, but they accidentally send in Bruce. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm, I'm very confused at this point as to the plan that the court has. I'm confused as to what Jim is hoping to get out of the court. Is he hoping to just take them down completely? Does he want to just... I mean, I can't see mm -hmm. any other way for him other than complete demolition of the panel, the jury. The court? Yeah, let's go with it. Yeah, let's absolutely go with it. Let's um, it. Yeah. I believe that's at mm girl 89 mm girl. Michelle F. What's up? Michelle F. is who told us about the Barnes. Also, I will tweet this information because we're running a little low on yeah. time, but there is a Gotham convention of sorts. Mm. They have a lot of confirmed guests. It's out in Chicago, oddly enough. I will tweet those details because I don't have them readily available. I don't want to have them wrong. Speed round on predictions. Anything. Uh, 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 fire and ice. Not this episode, but the next episode. Looking forward to the two of them doing some dueling. Looking forward to that. I think Butch is gonna die. Oh man, big, big prediction. I think Butch gonna die because he's gonna get between Tabitha and Barbara. Tabitha and Barbara have a stronger bond than Tabitha and Butch. Ooh. Butch gonna die. They gonna, they're gonna team. The uneasy team of Nigma, Mar Barbara, Tabitha are going to have to team up with all the freaks. So Penguin, Ivy, Freeze. Firefly, maybe Barnes if Barnes isn't the weapon. Um, this is our first head-to-head -head disagreement. I think that, uh, or prediction, I should say. Uh, I think that Butch and Tabitha go their separate ways and leave Barbara behind. I think Tabitha is waking up to how much Barbara does not respect or honor her. Um, and it would take a huge gesture from Barbara, and Barbara's kind of self-consumed like, with Barbara and her initiatives right now. So I think they're in separate ways. But it would be great drama to see Butch die and them come together, mm. because you know I love those ladies. And the one last part of the predictions... This time next week, barring some wonkiness, we will know if Gotham is renewed. Hootie hoo! This is because, and I will verify it, Fox will be having their upfronts between now and next week. Mm. I hope I'm correct, because I don't, I'm really tired of, really tired of talking about this every week. Uh, yeah, I just hope it gets renewed. I, I would like a season to wrap it up. Like, uh, two more seasons, really, I think, should, should give this whole story a wrap up. I think they've done... A really good job of bringing it from a mediocre place to a really fun place that's exciting to watch every week. That's interesting for longtime Batman fans to come in and kind of guess what's going to happen and which fan theories they're going to use. Uh, and I'd like to see the world kind of complete. Yes. Monday, May 15th. Next Monday. We'll our know. Fox is up front in, right. in New York City. So by this time next week, we will know. If it is on Fox's schedule of shows. Let's do it. Fingers crossed. That's called the um, passive-aggressive cancellation. If you're unaware, if you're not on the upfronts, you're canceled. They just don't care enough to tell you. Let's hope it stays. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. There's still a week to let Fox know. If you want to tag Joelle in the tweet, letting Fox know, where can they find you, Joelle? I'm Joelle Monique. You can find me all over the internet at Joelle Monique at every week at blackgirlnerds.com. Check my interview with W. Camel Bell from CNN's American... Oh my gosh, Race, Shades of, United Shades of America. I'm here, guys. Uh, also, uh, we just interviewed Louis Tan. It was an amazing interview right here at After Buzz. You can check that out now. It's already live on YouTube. Uh, and uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Did you like it? Didn't you like it? I want to talk to you guys about it. So, like, tweet me and let me know what your thoughts were. Um, and I'm Steve Kaufman. You can find me on Twitter at Steve Kaufman. That is K-A-U-F-M-A-N-N. -A -N. Uh, if you want to stick around tonight, I'll be covering Better Call Saul. Yeah. And not this Sunday, but next Sunday, there's going to be a wrestling pay-per-view. It's WWE Backlash. I'll be covering that. Woo! I also cover the leftovers here at AfterBuzz TV. Yeah, you do. And it kind of gets weird. It gets Speaking of get weird, you can also find me at Steve Kaufman on Snapchat. Thank you and good night. Bye. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. 
To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.